In this tutorial, I will show you how to model induction heating of a metallic bar using COMSOL multiphysics. So the model includes a metallic bar within a coil. The coil will be supplied with a high frequency excitation current, which generates an alternating magnetic field. The alternating magnetic field interacts with the metallic bar and induces eddy currents in it. The eddy currents will heat up the bar due to the joule effect. So you can see that there is an axis of symmetry. So we can select 2D axisymmetric model. For the physics, go to the AC-DC module, electromagnetic heating, and select induction heating. This will add the heat transfer interface and the magnetic fields interface. And the electromagnetic heating is the coupling. Go to study. And here we can select frequency transient study. So we want to model the heat transfer problem in the time domain. But since we know that the input signal will be sinusoidal, the excitation current will be sinusoidal, we can model the uh, magnetic fields problem in the frequency domain. And that information is transferred to the heat transfer physics, which can be solved in using a time dependent solver. So you can use this preset study in console to make the simulation much faster. So it is uh, loading right now. The geometry will be very quick to construct. We only have the uh, uh, airspace, I will change the units to millimeters. So we have the airspace. And the cylinder. One segment of the coil. Oh, I need to enter a circle. And we will have eight turns of the coil, so you can copy the segment eight uh, times. Go to transform, select array, repeat it eight times, and there will be some distance between the turns. Okay, and we will need to add an infinite element domain. So go to airspace under layers and enter a five millimeters layer. With that, the geometry is complete. You can go to definitions, right click, insert infinite element domain. And select the outer layers. Make sure the type of uh, the infinite element domain is selected uh, as cylindrical. OK, now we need to define the materials. We have air. So enter the properties of air. We won't have to enter the thermal properties because we won't need them. And add the material from the library. We will use iron as the material for the metallic bar. Double click on iron to add it. Select the cylinder. You can see that the materials are already defined. But for the thermal properties, um, we will have to define them manually because these are constant value. And with the application that we are going to model, the temperature of the cylinder will increase a lot. So the temperature will go from 20 degrees to about 500 or 600 degrees. In that range, the temperature will have an effect on these properties. So the properties are dependent on temperature. 
So I have a set of data which I got from a published article, and I will show you how to enter these data if you have them. So under uh, expand ion, go to basic, right click and functions, insert interpolation function. So the first one will be for electrical conductivity. We will name the function sigma. And I have an Excel sheet with the information available. So I will copy the data and insert them. For the interpolation method, you can select cubic spline to make the curve more smooth. The input unit is Kelvin. The output unit is Siemens Perimeter. And to make sure that you've inserted your uh, data correctly, you can plot the function. So you see, this is how electrical conductivity will vary with temperature. The second property is thermal conductivity. So we can name it KT. I'll go to the Excel sheet and copy the data data points. The input unit is Kelvin and the output unit is Watt per meter Kelvin. The last property will be specific heat. We can name it CP. I'll go to the Excel sheet and copy the data. The input unit will be Kelvin and the output will be Joule per kg Kelvin. You need to uh, pay attention to the units because uh, these can affect the results. We will choose cubic spline. So you can plot these properties and see how they vary with temperature. Lastly, for the air, it is still asking for the thermal properties, but we, we want to model heat transfer in the cylinder only. So you can go to the heat transfer physics, use the deselect box, and deselect everything except the cylinder, because we are only interested in the temperature variation within the cylinder. So when you do that, you can see that COMSOL no longer asks for any thermal properties for the air. It will only ask them, or it will only take them for the cylinder, because the heat transfer is now defined for the cylinder only. So with that, the material section is complete. Now we can go to physics. And for the magnetic field interface, we only need to enter the coil. So we will select all the coil segments. The conductor model should be homogenized multi-turn to neglect the skin effect in the coil. The coil excitation is in current and we will supply a current uh, sinusoidal uh, current uh, input with, a, with an amplitude of 100 amps and we will multiply that by eight because we have eight turns. So basically, whatever value you enter here, COMSOL is going to divide it by the number of coil segments that you have selected. The number of turns is one because every segment has only one, one coil turn. And with that, the magnetic fields physics is complete. The heating source comes from uh, the coupling here, so that is added automatically. If you can view the equation, and you can see the QE term, this comes from the uh, dual heating. So the eddy currents generated in the magnetic fields interface will be transferring energy to, uh, to heat up the cylinder. In the heat transfer interface, we can make the model more accurate by modeling radiation and convection. 
So for convection, insert a heat flux boundary condition and select the outer edges of the cylinder. Select convective heat flux. And for the coefficient, we will enter 20. Air usually has a coefficient between uh, 10 and 50, depending on its temperature. We will select 20 for this simulation. And go to boundaries and insert surface to ambient radiation. Again, select the outer edges of the uh, cylinder. Surface emissivity, we will enter a user-defined value of 0 0.4. So depending on the uh, surface conditions, this value for ion can range from very close to 0 to 0 0.8. Emissivity has a maximum value of one, which means uh, the body will, it will basically behave like a black body. If emissivity is zero, then the body will not emit any heat. For the sake of this simulation, we will assume a partially oxidized surface. So a value of in between of 0 0.4 is reasonable. So that's all for the physics section. And I forgot to change one property in materials. For iron, you can see that uh, a value of 4,000 is uh, defined for permeability. But since the excitation frequency is very high, permeability tends to drop with frequency. So we will be using a frequency of 200 kilo kilohertz. And the relative permeability at that frequency tends to be between 200 to 500. Uh, there isn't really a specific value, so we will enter a value of 300. And also we need to call the functions that we have defined. I forgot to do that too. So for electrical conductivity, instead of defining a constant value, we need to define the functions. So sigma as a function of temperature. T is the temperature uh, variable, which comes from the heat transfer physics. And for heat capacity, we defined it as Cp. So Cp as a function of temperature. And for thermal conductivity, we defined it as Kt as a function of temperature. OK, so everything looks right now. We can go to mesh, select a user controlled mesh. You need to make sure that you use mapped mesh for the infinite element domain to increase its effectiveness. I will add a distribution mode to increase the uh, number of layers in the infinite element domain. I'll keep it five. And I will add a sizing node. If you click on build, you can see that this is the mesh. But there is one final very important step you need to uh, apply, which is uh, you need to insert a boundary layer. Since the excitation frequency will be very high, the induced current in the cylinder will get concentrated next to the surface. So this is called the skin effect. And the value of current moving away from the surface will decay exponentially. And this happens in a very small uh, depth. So we need to calculate the skin depth. I will go to parameters and define parameter delta for the skin depth. And the formula for the skin depth is 1 divided the square root of pi times the permeability of free space, which is defined as mu0 const in COMSOL. This is defined by default. Multiplied by relative permeability, which we chose as 300 multiplied by excitation frequency, which will be 200 kilohertz, and multiplied by electrical conductivity. Since electrical conductivity varies with temperature, we will choose the maximum value here, which will be around 12 mega Siemens per meter. Enter, and you can see that this is the value of this conduct. So you will see in a moment why all this matters. We will enter 10 layers. We go here. First layer thickness is delta over 4, so a quarter of his skin depth. 
click on build all and now we can zoom to the surface oh i forgot to make a selection so we will select the cylinder only and the outer edges click on build all now if you zoom you can see these very small uh, layers that have been added so this is the first layer if you look at my cursor and the thickness of this layer is delta over four a quarter of the skin depth and then every successive layer will be increased in thickness by a factor of 1.2 so the second layer is 1.2 times thicker than the first layer and we have 10 successive layers as we chose so the induced current will vary from a maximum at the surface to a value close to zero uh, somewhere near the last layer. If you add more layers, that will be fine. It will just make the uh, computational uh, effort more expensive. So the mesh is, all, is almost ready. Since it's 2D, we can make the mesh finer. It won't really uh, increase, it won't make it much uh, computationally expensive. 2D models are usually very fast. So now we can move to, to the solver. Right click and insert the default solver. Go to time dependent solver under time stepping. We'll, we will put a maximum step constraint of 0 0.5 seconds and expand time dependent solver. Make sure that the direct uh, solver is chosen. In this case, it is, so everything is fine. And in the frequency transient step, insert the excitation frequency. This is for the, for the magnetic fields physics. And the output times for the heat transfer problem, we will choose from zero seconds in steps of one second until 60 seconds. Now to make the problem more interesting, uh, instead of just modeling, uh, instead of just getting the heat distribution from zero to 60 seconds, we can, we, we can tell COMSOL or we can get from console the time needed to achieve a specific temperature. So how much time do we need to heat this metallic bar such that the maximum temperature in the cylinder reaches a specific value? So to do that, you can right click on time dependent solver and enter a stop condition. Add a new condition and here we need to add a maximum. Before adding a maximum, we need to define a maximum operator. So go under definitions, right click, non-local couplings, and select maximum. Select the cylinder. And this is the operator name. Let's remove the one. We'll keep it max operation. So max operation can calculate the maximum of any input variable. So we, we will go back to the stop condition and we will enter comp1, which, is, which stands for component one max operation which we just defined and the input will be comp1.t so the temperature variable from component one we need to know its maximum value and the condition is if this maximum is higher than let's say we will choose a value of 400 degrees celsius uh, the default is Kelvin, so you need to enter Celsius if you want to work with a different unit. And enter. So this is the condition. Maximum temperature in the cylinder is more than 400 degrees. When this condition is uh, satisfied, if it is true, then the solver will stop automatically. For the output, we can, we can tell console to give us the final results before and after stopping. So with that, the solver settings are complete. We can click on solve now. 
So the simulation uh, will not take a lot of time, maybe half a minute a maximum because it's a 2D model. This is the degrees of freedom. It shows you how large your model is. And you can see that console has opened a time dependent solver convergence plot. So this shows you the reciprocal of step size and you can see that it starts with a very small step size and then it flattens out because we specified a maximum of 0 0.5 seconds, which is why you see a value of two here. So you can see the uh, simulation is progressing quite fast. Should be completed very soon. Okay, and it stopped. Now, uh, console has given you a warning, which says stop condition fulfilled at t equal 37.5 seconds. So at we need 37.5 seconds such so that the final uh, or the maximum temperature in the cylinder reaches 400 degrees. Comsol has generated some plots automatically. So we are interested in the temperature. Let's change the units from Kelvin to degrees Celsius. So you see the maximum temperature is 400. Uh, you can change the uh, color style if you want to. From color style, we can use rainbow. So the red color indicates the maximum. So you see it is 400 and this is achieved at 37.5 seconds. You can create a video to see how the temperature varies from zero to 37.5 seconds. So we'll go to animation, click on player. Let's change the settings. So we will select all the frames. It will loop over all the time solutions. Click on show frame. And now console is assembling the frames together and then it will play them when it is complete. Now you can click on play and you can see the time uh, evolution of the temperature variation. One final thing, if you want to export this as a video, you can select file. And then you can go over these settings and you can export it as a video if you like to. You can also check the, uh, I will insert a 2D plot and show you the induced current next to the surface. So the magnitude of J, the current density. So uh, you can see everywhere, everywhere it's blue because the current density is zero except very near to the surface. So this is the skin effect. You can see that the uh, current density is extremely high next to the surface and over a very small distance, it decays to almost zero. So this is the reason why we added a lot of mesh layers in that region. It is, it is precisely to capture this effect. So that is all for induction heating. Thanks for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I will answer them. Please uh, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you found this video uh, useful. Thank you.